Circuit Chris Amon and the action at Mighty Manfield and the B and TV eights was nothing but a battlefield from class two to class one. Plenty of thrills and spills as Heimgartner, Ross and Barg shared the honours in class one. Tipoli took away the honours in class two. So now we head to Hampton Downs at the final showdown for the B and T V Ace. Andre Heimgardner leading the battle in Class 1. Liam McDonald back in charge to defend his title in Class 2. And a bumper field of 22 cars lining up. Let's take a look at the track with Andrew Anderson. Thanks, Clint. Here we are at Hampton Downs. 2.7 kilometres long, nine turns in total. The top speed at 240 kilometres an hour. Current lap record, Simon Evans at 105.339. And it's been a busy week for Andre Heimgard from Adelaide in a Nissan back to Hampton in a Camry. It's totally different, the cars, totally different driving position, driving style, the track's obviously totally different to Adelaide and the format's different as well. So it's a bit of a readjust that session there, the first practice, just got my head back in and then uh, we'll head out for all the fight soon. Good to be back here in Auckland at Hampton Downs and being the last uh, round of the year. It's always exciting. Championship comes down to the line. And ironically, the biggest battle is against his teammate, Jason Barguan on the 97 Tiger Camry. Well, here we are at the bottom of the nine. It's all on. The last uh, round of the championship. So, yeah, look, obviously, it's uh, it's been a great year. We've had some uh, really good success, and, and particularly for the Richards team. I mean, to be able to win all the races we have, to have both cars fighting at the uh, for the championship right at the end. It's not about just going on a clean track with a fresh set of tyres and, and having a crack. That's one part of the weekend. But the racing, that's the bit that I love. I love the battling, I love the fighting, I love the door-to-door, -door, and I love, uh, you know, dealing with the traffic and making good decisions. And that's what uh, is being a champion is all about. In Class 2, defending champion Liam McDonald has a 12-point lead over Chelsea Herbert. That's uh, pretty close in the top three for the... We're in a Class 2 championship and um, currently leading by 12 points, so just got to keep it clean and have a good weekend, yeah. And with Brock Timperley winning all three races at Manfield, who will handle the pressure? It's pretty exciting to be in the car again and, you know, I've been looking forward to this for the past couple of weeks, so to be finally back in the seat is awesome. And we've got to just focus on doing our best in all three. As long as we can get through them and not get any bad results at the same time, you know, it's going to be good, yeah. Hey guys, John O'Lesser here. Great to be back racing in New Zealand in the BNT NZ Touring Cars. Talk to you a little bit about the flow here at Hampton Downs. For me, the flow has definitely got to be through turns two and three, through that S section through the middle of the track. Very important to get your braking perfect in there, keep the car balanced through the middle of the corner. That can make a really good passing opportunity up into turn four. Looking forward to a great weekend of racing here, Hampton Downs, and that's the flow. And in the battle for pole position, Barks took out Class 1, Brock Tipley took out Class 2. So all set for the opening race of the weekend. Hey guys, Brad Lathrop here, and welcome along to the latest edition of the Gulf Force 10 Tech Talk. Today we're at Hampton Downs for the final round of the championship, and we're just going to delve a little bit into the seating position and how you get comfortable for racing the car. So a very big part of getting comfortable and having a good seating position for the race car is to ensure that you're nice and close to the steering wheel and also that you've got nice bend in your legs. At any one stage when you're pressing the clutch or applying the pressure to the brake, or going full throttle, you do not want to have your legs fully extended as that's going to be really hard and exert a lot more energy than you need to. Another big part of it, once again being close to the steering wheel, is to ensure that your arms have got a nice bend in them. At no stage when you're driving do you want to have your arms fully extended. Exactly the same with your legs. If you have your legs fully extended or if you have your arms fully extended when you're trying to turn, you're using up too much energy 
and you're going to be running out of power to be able to get the car around the track. And ironically, it's the guys in the hot seat who take the battle for pole. Jason Barguana, second in the championship, starting in front of Andre Heimgarn and the teammates on the front row of the grid, followed by Ross Hughes-Taylor. A big bumper field of 22 cars when you have the Class 1 cars combined with Class 2, led by Brock Tipperley, and the Class 3 cars in for the round for this weekend. So it's a fantastic sight, Andrew Anderson, as they roll up the hill at Hampton Downs before we go racing to decide who will be the champions this year in race one in the B&T V8. It's all about who's going to uh, handle the pressure here as they come to the line and they're away. So starting to fan out here into turn one. Nick Ross is looking down the inside, but it's the two Camrys. Side by side, Lance Hughes, he's having a good run there on the outside of Nick Ross. Nice cool track conditions this morning here at Hampton Downs. So plenty of uh, temperature for the tyres, but also Good conditions for a bit of speed in these cars as they go through that flow section that John O'Lester was talking about, the up and over between turns two and three and down to turn four, the higher pull happen. Will there be plenty of uh, passing opportunities throughout the weekend? Yes, it's certainly one of the uh, top spots for passing and it's great to see the field getting through here cleanly on the opening laps. Bargwain are out the front. Pump garden, oh, we spoke too soon. Ashwell has uh, had a tangle there at the hairpin and uh, exited out into the uh, sand trap, so unfortunately that brings out the safety car early on. So the number 11 digger car, the Ford Falcon of Justin Ashville from the South Island finally got himself dug out of trouble. So the safety car's off, we're back racing again. The two teammates, the two Camry boys from Tony Richards' Toyota battling for the title this weekend. Only 69 points between Jason Barguana, who's currently leading the race and in second spot, and Andre Heimgardner in the 71 Superlux Camry, who's out to try and just basically finish all three races and take away the championship back to Aussie. But Nick Ross is currently third in the Nissan and in the championship as well, doing a good job. Followed by Hughes. Jack Smith had a bit of speed over the last couple of rounds. What can he do this weekend? Yeah, look, any of those top five competitors are uh, in the hunt for this race win. Andre here, he's just got to keep clean. Uh, he's a racer at heart, so he's going to want to try and get in front of his teammate. But uh, one of the big things here, he doesn't want to trip up on any incidents uh, along the way. So let's just see how this unfolds. You see the Dunlop signs in the background as they come down the Porsche Stripper. The word is a lot of teams have actually saved a lot of green Dunlop tyres for the weekend. So it'll be interesting to see how they rotate those over the three races to try and get the maximum amount of grip for the maximum amount of power for the maximum amount of points. That's right, Clint. Yes, yeah, certainly there's a lot to be played for in this uh, weekend here. We see Lance Hughes looking down the inside of Nick Ross. He was a little bit far back. Just cleanly through there, through turn one. Heimgardner here, he's uh, starting to pull himself back up onto the back of Barguana. So those Dunlops that you talk about, Clint, they're starting to come up to operating temperature. So Andre's looking pretty racy now. Coming off a fantastic weekend in the Adelaide Street Race of the Supercars with his debut for Nissan. Oh, on board here, Barguana, a little bit untidy through the hairpin. Andre had a nice clean line, clean exit. So, uh, he, oh, yeah, the pressure's starting to be exerted. Oh, a big lock up from Bargs. Smoky, smoky and the bandit. So Andre now right under the boot wing there of the Camry. So uh, is he going to have a lunge here down the inside? It's another great opportunity into the final turn. Just going to follow him round at this point. Back on board. Bargs is a little bit loose up front there, trying to get to the apex. Andre had a better line. Both the Camrys a little bit twitchy in the early stages of this opening race. B and TV8's Hepton Downs. Yeah, the big telltale sign there from the onboarders. These guys are racing. Then they're, they're uh, putting it all out there on the on the line. So it's great to see. Yeah, through turn one here, a little bit further back. Nick Ross now. Is he going to get a run here down the inside? He's having a look. He's down there. Andre's not going to argue. Thinks better of it, so that's a great pass from Nick Ross. Clean and smooth, they've given each other a bit of racing room as well, so Heimgartner just slipping back into third now. Yeah, look, you've got to think that Andre doesn't want to get tied up in any incidents here, and these guys are pretty racy. Lance Hughes now has tucked them behind him, and we know Lance has shown some good pace over the last few rounds. You know the Bugs is going to go all out. He's going to go hard and fast to try and get the win to close up in the Battle of the Points Championship against Heimgartner. Heimgartner. Had a few seating issues in the uh, Adelaide Street race with his Nissan. Was pretty uncomfortable and um, actually complained about having just about lost a lot of feeling in his legs. So 
maybe, uh, you know, just recovering from that, but certainly hasn't quite got that same sort of speed that he had in the previous round. Yeah, look, the first couple of laps now he's starting to drift off, so maybe he's just going a little bit more conservative. And uh, here we see Lance Hughes now sticking his nose down the inside. Andre's nervously leaving him a bit of room there, so doesn't want to shut the door too aggressive. And now Lance is down the inside again. Well, he got taken at this part of the track last time. And now he's under, ooh, just sliding, coming out over turn three into the up and over. And he's under real pressure here from Lance Hughes all of a sudden. Yeah, I can see a little bit of hesitation there creeping in with Andre. He's a bit undecided there whether to, to race or defend and uh, or just let Lance through and be conservative. But here we are on board, checking out the mirrors. Again, he leaves a lot of room on the inside. Hughes having a look down the inside as they come out of the dipper down the short straight. He's been swamped by two or three, including John DeVeth in that lovely 23 Super Tourer yes. from one of the Class 3 invite cars. So what is happening here? The series leader is going backwards in the opening race of the weekend. That's a classic example of trying to be conservative then and ending up uh, losing your concentration. So I think Andre's just got to knuckle down and get back to what he knows best, and that's racing. So these are your class leaders on the track at the moment. Jason Barkwan on the 97 Tiger Camry and Brock Timpley in class two in the 59 Erosion Control Ford Falcon. He's been really, really good coming out of the latter part of the season. And now Jack Smith pulling up to the bumper of the Superlux car. There's Timpley, McDonald and Herbert sort of developing into a three-way battle in class two, Andrew. It certainly is. Timpley's out the front. He needs to get maximum points. And and, uh, and uh, let the others fight it out behind him. But here we go, Chelsea's just starting to uh, look like she's pulling up to the back of Liam. So uh, this is really starting to heat up in class two. Remember only 12 points between Liam McDonald, the defending champion in the 69 Speedy Science Ford Falcon up against the 62 MTF Ford Falcon of Chelsea Herbert. So it's all about pressure too, about, you know, handling the psych of racing for the points and the championship and just trying to be fast and smooth at the same time. Who can handle it? Yeah, well, Liam's been in the situation before. Last year, he had a battle to the end. And let's see if he can pull it off. But we've jumped back up front here. Oh, Lance Hughes is going wide. Chance for Heimgarner to pick up another spot. That'll be handy in the points battle. Yeah, risky move here up the inside from Andre, I'd have to say. Whoa, just about overcooking it down the dipper. And they're all running wide. Yep, so uh, Hughes there and Jack Smith. Starting to be a bit of a tight battle pack here for sure. So suddenly after dropping back into the clutches of the class one cars, as DeVeth has a look down the inside of Jack Smith, Heimgarten is moving back out through the field. Go figure. Yeah, maybe he's made a little bit of adjustment inside the cockpit there. These cars do have adjustable roll bars front and rear, so uh, perhaps he's just been able to tune it up a little bit. You see Nick Ross up front. And we jump on board, just have a little bit of a lock up. Hang on. Things are not looking too good on board here. Doesn't sound good for Nick Ross of the 007 Total Lubricants Nissan Ultima. No, a bit of smoke that doesn't look good and he's certainly losing drive. So suddenly Heimgard has gone from fifth back up to second. How would you feel? Relief? Well, yeah, it's starting to play out as we see Nick Ross there pulling over in the background, but uh, other two teammates here, Jack Smith, Lance Hughes, having a ding-dong battle. Great to see young Jack come in from Australia and get some valuable seat time here in the BNTV 8s And all supported by Lance Hughes and the team from Hamilton Asheville, of course, starring Barry. He's the mythical guy. <laughs> Everyone's got the name Barry on their shirts because Lance can't remember anyone. So it's the uh, the Barry team from Hamilton Asheville. Yeah, it's great to see his uh, investment in the series. Here we go up front, Bargwana. Clean bit of track. And he's doing a superb job, Bargs in the 97 Tiger Building Systems car. The last lap, even though he's a bit twitchy there. So he's done exactly what he had to do, was clear off, win the battle for pole, try and win the opening race, and hope that Andre Heimgartner had a few problems, and halfway through, it was working perfectly, the plan, but Heimgartner has actually come back now, so whatever points he was going to pick up in the battle of the chase for the championship is going to be minimised by Heimgartner, who's now right behind him. That's right, yeah, Andre uh, would have been sweating a little bit during the middle of that race, but all he's got to do now is get round half a lap, and he's minimised the points loss to uh, Bargwana here out in front. Oh, a little bit of a jump there on the curb as you see another one of the invitation cars stranded on the outside. 
Eric Hennehoff, a really nice looking car from uh, the Class 3 Invitation V8s for the weekend. So they're running under local yellows there, we can see a green. So uh, hopefully the cars will tiptoe through there. So it's the last lap, big finish coming up for 97, Jason Barguana. A former champ trying to become the champ again. Ross just trying to get over the start finish line to pick up some points. So Bargs gets the win. Hive Gardner will come home in second, Hughes third, followed by DeVeth and then Smith. And just watch Nick Ross, third in the championship. He's just gonna cruise this crippled Nissan over the start finish line. Timperley in control of class two. G. He got off to a slow start. He's been the fast car for the last two or three rounds. Oh, look at that. We've got contact between the two championship chasers. Yes, gosh, they've uh, come out of that yellow zone. And uh, here we are on board with Liam. Certainly there's been contact. Got turned around by Chelsea Herbert. His race is there. What the singles. hell? Yeah, we need to see a few more angles on that, you know. Was there room? Here we are on board with Chelsea. She ducks down the inside. Oh, she's had a dive and the gap was there, but it closed up. So, well, that one's going to be debated long and hard. So Brock Timperley, he'll take the win. He'll close in the battle for the points. Matt Projetsky, he comes home in second ahead of Chelsea Herbert. And then Liam McDonald coming back into class two. So what a talking point. Dramatic finish to the opening race, won by Bargs from Heimgardner and Hughes in class one. But the protest room is going to be very busy after the contact and the final lap in the chase for the championship in class two, which was won by Brock Tibbley with Matt Projetska getting a really good podium finish. Herbert coming home in third and Lee McDonald back in fifth place after the big contact. Obviously to get pole um, was really good to get a good start, but the track was so greasy and hot and it was just crazy. So um, had to get through those first couple of laps and then we uh, obviously found ourselves in a position where I was in the lead and just head down and we can get away. So. I noticed in the mirror, they all disappeared. I don't know what happened. It's fantastic to see so many cars out there. I mean, the racing's great. There's, uh, there's great for the fans, and it's great for V8 touring cars. Yeah, yeah, we've got the car, car dialed up nice, and uh, yeah, great result and uh, great start to the weekend. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I mean, we're still, still in it for chance. Very slim chance, but uh, anything's possible here at Motorsports. So we'll see what tomorrow has to bring and, um, and go from there. And it's great to see the Class 3 cars getting their cars out of the shed to go racing and a really big field in the B&T V8s lining up for race two. And what a battle it's been this year for 2017, 2018. Six rounds, five months, 18 races from the supercars in November to the Christmas meeting at Tolpo at the Bruce McLaren Motorsport Park. Won by Bargs and Chelsea Herbert creating history, becoming the first female to get a win in V8 touring cars in New Zealand. And after the Christmas break, it was all on in the sunshine. Down in January, plenty of spectacular racing in the South Island from Ruapuna to Teratonga. The B and T V eights put on a hot show. Herbert continued her success in the Class Two battle, picking up more wins, putting the pressure on the local man Liam McDonald as they headed down to the fantastic Southern Loop. A moment Nick Ross will never forget when he lost his rear wing. Brock Timberley started to put the pressure on McDonald and Herbert as Heimgardner took the battle to Bargs in Class One. Ross came back to pick up another win. And then we headed to the New Zealand Grand Prix meeting at Mighty Manfield at Circuit Chris Amon. And once again, honours shared between Heim Gardner, Bargs, Ross, Jack Smith showing some real pace. Brock Tibley, the fast finishing star in Class 2, taking out a clean sweep at Mighty Manfield. So here is the grid for Race 2 in the B&T V8s here at Hampton Downs. Bargs, Heim Gardner and Ross in Class 1. And it's the reverse grid showdown in class two. So it's advantage to Liam McDonald, followed by Wallace and then Herbert after the contact in that ruling opening race of the weekend. Bronk Tipoli, who's currently third in the championship, further back down the field. So once again, it's a rolling start, cool conditions. On a Sunday morning here at Hampton Downs. And the battle continues out in front between the chasers and the championship. 
Here they are, the teammates side by side as Ross. We get the green light. Look at Ross down the inside. There's been an oil line down there from previous racing this weekend. Superb facilities here. What a great shot of Hampton Downs. Yeah, it shows how big this class has grown during the season here as they head off down into turn two. Bargwana and Hype Gardner. Resuming the battle up front, Nick Ross. It's great to see the work that the team put in to get that engine replaced. As we jump on board here with Nick. Yes, a broken crankshaft for the uh, the Ross He's team overnight. down the inside. It's a very authoritative pass. Yeah, good start. I mean, they, they worked right through to about midnight changing that engine. The whole team from Concepts Motorsport did a superb job, and straight away he's got some real speed in that in the sand this morning. Yeah, he certainly split the two Camrys there, so uh, Andre's now facing the back wing of that Nissan. And the word is that he's been struggling eh, with the seating, which is quite ironic uh, over the weekend, Andre Heingartner, but also uh, with the gear ratios in the camera. Yeah, look, he's just trying to adjust. Uh, he had a big weekend, obviously, at the Adelaide 500 in the supercar. And uh, here we are on board, Nick Ross looking back. Geez, he's uh, opened up the gap there on him quite uh, quickly as we see Lance Hughes now diving down the inside. Great shots here, outside of turn one. World-class facility now, Hampton Downs. Done a great job, Tony Quinn of the team. So here we see again, Andre Heimgartner slipping back down the field. The other boys are pretty racy, and Andre's, I think, are just a little bit undecided as to whether he's going to pull the sleeves up and muscle with these guys or just play conservative. It seems strange, though, they've got this car going so fast right throughout the season. We get to the final round, and all of a sudden, the gears are not quite there. It just doesn't seem to have the same sort of speed. It's weird, isn't it? It's been a while since Andre's won a championship here in New Zealand, so perhaps the pressure's just starting to get to him a little. But uh, I'm sure that the team will knuckle down and get him back into fighting position as we see here a bit of a battle in between the Group 1 and Group 2 classes. Here's the Group 3 guys like Blair McDonald, Matt Tubbs, also John O'Lester and Scott Taylor coming back into the championship as well. So great to have these guys making up a real fast, furious field this weekend here at Hampton Downs for the B and T V8s and also guys getting double duty in the GT classes as well, like John DeVette. So plenty of plenty of V8s on display this weekend as they race down through the blind iconic turn one at Hampton Downs. Yeah, it's great to see these guys there and the likes of Blair McDonald, you know, they're showing that they've got the skills to compete at this level. So uh, it's positive looking forward to next season with uh, bumper fields promised. It's a shame Tony Anderson uh, qualified fast but then had issues. Yeah, unfortunately they had some uh, engine issues at the sideline side them as we see Deveth down the inside of McDonald. And we see uh, Jono Lester down the inside of Brad Lathrop. But uh, back here to class two. And after the protest, followed by the appeal, the decision after the contact in race one, it wasn't Chelsea Herbert's fault that she dived down the inside. So basically the results stay as they are. So it means it's a very, very tight, nervous championship. And all three races, McDonald, Timberley and Herbert have a chance to still take the title. That's right, yeah. So uh, Liam at the moment's in the box seat. He's out front. Timberley's uh, also, uh, he's ahead of Chelsea. So that fight for second in the championship's really going to be heating up. So a couple of controversial moments of contact in that very intense battle in class two, which means there's a lot of passion between these teams and they really want the win. And look, being a uh, champion in the BNT V8 certainly is a, a great thing to have on your racing resume. It's uh, been the launching pad for a lot of drivers in the past. So uh, there's a who's who's list of names on that uh, on those trophies, and these guys and girls will want to be adding theirs to it. Bargs is on that trophy. Nick Ross is on that trophy. You'll see the yellow Camry at the back. Andre Heimgartner, he's the man who really wants to add his name to the list of the winners on that trophy to take it back to the Nissan Motorsport team and the supercars. That would be a real feel-good factor because the racing over the five weekends here has certainly improved. The speed, as soon as he jumped into the Adelaide Street race, he said, yeah, it's just dialed up straight away. So it's been a great way, and hopefully more Aussies will come over and race over the summer here in New Zealand, a bit like what Jack Smith's doing from the Australian Touring Car Championship. That's right. But uh, out front here at the moment, Nick Ross is really starting to put the pressure on Bargwana. So it's great to see Nick, uh, you know, with that repaired Nissan Altima back out in fighting form. On board here with Nick Ross looking out the back. Oh, Lance Hughes getting a bit of a wiggle coming out of the crest there. And Jack Smith, his teammate, down the inside. Great shots of the undulations and also the, the rising changes in the 
and the terrain here at Hampton Downs. Got that European type sort of feel, blind brows. So plenty of passing opportunities around the higher pull hairpin and ducking down the inside of the Porsche Dipper there by the Dunlop sign. So superb track, really different from some of the other tracks around the country as Deveth having a look down the inside of the big Dale ITM sweeper. Yep, Deveth there, uh, one of the imitation cars, really showing good form. Able to match it here with the leading Group 1 Class 1 cars. Had a superb win in the Speedworks Rush Hour and a big Camaro, so he's had a great weekend so far as well. Here we go, Glenn two, Smith. two, one. Nick Ross again tucking right under the boot wing there of Barguana. Is he going to have a look down the inside? Oh, he's going to have to take a big lunge from there. Bargs closes the door and Jack Smith's really starting to rattle on the back, but back here into class two, Tim Pelley. He's been able to pull himself up onto Liam McDonald, so this is going to be a great battle. It's a long way around the outside there, but he's going to try and duck down and get the switch back on the inside. Good drive here as they head down to the final turn. Slow start to the season for the former Mazda champion, but gee, I tell you what, after dominating Teratonga and Manfield, he's got these two championship chases. Herbert McDonald worried because he's got some real speed as he drifts out wide, keeps it off the grass. Look at that, three-way battle, class two, great racing. Yeah, now Chelsea's got to choose who she's going to uh, back coming up the front straight. She's gone the outside line with Timberley. So is he going to clear Liam on the outside? He certainly is under brakes. He's... Oh, hang on to it. He's gone too deep. Chelsea, there you go. Chelsea's been able to get down the inside and pick his pocket just like that. So now she's resumed the battle with her championship sparring partner. Out the front, as you see Lance Hughes there parked in the background. So there they are, first, second and third on the track and first, second and third in the championship. Thrilling racing. Great way for Class 2 to come down to the final race of the season. Yeah, with only a handful of points between them, everything to play for here on the track, so every position is vital. Chelsea now tucked in behind Liam. Liam's going defensive down the inside. Timberley's trying to get the run as he did the lap before. And it's basically just finish in front of the person who's behind you in the championship. If you do that on the track, you'll take out the title, but it's, you know, there's a lot of pressure. It's a little bit about psyching going on at times, isn't there? Yeah, it certainly is. It's who can cope with it the most. And here we see the Class 1 cars starting to close in onto that battle pack. So uh, is there going to be a race between a race for sure here play out in the next uh, final lap? So now it's that twist in the tail because all of a sudden you've got lack la traffic coming up. So the Class 2 cars on this last lap have to be aware where the Class 1 cars are coming through. That's right. Here we go. This battle pack here out front. Liam, Chelsea, Timberley's down the inside. Barks trying to make his way through. He's got a bit of a gap to Nick Ross here, so he's just got to bide his time. So they come up through turns two and three. Heading down towards the higher pool hairpin. McDonald, Timberley, Herbert having a look down the inside. Oh, Chelsea's gone. She's just long, just about being collected by Barks and Ross and avoids a bit of carnage. I was going to say that it looked like Chelsea was going to have a dive down the inside. Here we go on board with Barks. So Is normally you hold Chelsea? your racing line when the fast cars are in front. Oh, there we go. Just a little we love tap. Bargs, unfortunately, has got caught out. Now he's had to try and avoid Chelsea a second time, but I think there. Here we go on board. Chelsea Herbert, nothing she could do. Collected from behind. So uh, let's see what the officials say about that. But oh, I've got to think that Barguana needed to bite his time a little bit more. So Bargs is going to take the win in class one but it could be heading back to the protest room. Aren't we surprised by that? Yeah, Liam McDonald, Timperley coming through there in second. We see here now another class two. Kajetsky coming through, but yeah, Chelsea really the big loser there. So another twist in the championship chase as the class three guys come across the line. Scott Taylor after his back injury, getting back into this third Camry from the Tony Richards team, which is great to see him racing in the triple two Camry and Blair McDonald hooning it over the top of Hampton Downs. So it means that the championship chase will come down to the last race of the season. It's, it's on, isn't it? So at the end of the day, we, we had that goal and, and we're trying to execute. But one of the challenges we had there is we've on used tyres, a couple of the old blokes having, um, other blokes having a bad season. They've got greens like they're coming out of fashion. So the pressure was on because I could see those guys were much quicker than what I was, but I just kept to make no mistakes, head down, and I stopped looking in the mirror and got on with it.
But look, at the end of the day, if we can, um, you know, come away with a win for the weekend, that's one of the goals we sort of obviously set for the weekend. Who knows what's going to happen in the last race? We got a few good points on uh, Andre then, so if he can finish 238th and I can win it, well, we might have a chance. Yeah, yeah, it was an awesome race with Brock and Chelsea. Uh, battling with Brock for like the last half, last half of the race, so side by side racing, it was awesome. Yeah, you're yeah, looking forward to the standing start. I'm real good on that, so yeah, looking forward to it. And after the revised results following protests and appeals, this is how they eventually finished in race two with Nick Ross getting the win from Smith and DeVette. And of course, the big talking point, Jason Barguana, dropped right down to the rear of the field for class one after the contact with Chelsea Herbert. Liam McDonald and Brock Tibbley taking out the honours in class two. Herbert back down the field, her championship under threat as we head to the big decider for the whole year. Seven marks the 102nd running of the Indianapolis 500, featuring our very own Scott Dixon. As part of the countdown to this year's event, the actual green flag that will start the race is on a worldwide tour. Hosted by New Zealand's Willie Kay, there was an official welcome at the Marion Road to Rua. Other stars to check out the flag included New Zealand multi-time midget champion Michael Piggins, US drivers Zach Darm, sprint ace Jonathan Allard, and New Zealand sprint car champ Kerry Brokus, before finally meeting Scott's very own family with his mother and sisters and their respective children. Now, all we need is for Scott to take that green flag on Sunday, May 27. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Hampton Downs, we're set for the final race of the season for the B&T V8 to see who's going to be the champions. Timberley, Brzezinski, McDonald, Herbert lining up in class two with McDonald holding the championship chase over Herbert. And in the battle for class one, Andre Heimgardner in the driving seat against his teammate, Jason Barguana. And what a great way to finish after six round, five months of racing, over 18 showdowns. We're here for the final race to decide who will be the champions. How good is that? Andrew Anderson, because you've got Timberley, who's currently third and really putting the pressure on McDonald and Herbert in class two. And here they are battling the chase for the championship on the track right here, right now. Yeah, timberley has got to go out and clean win this race and hope that things play out in his favour. Chelsea there, decisive move to get up into third place. Here we are on board, class one, Nick Ross. Oh, great launch there. Brad Lathrop, a little bit slow to get away. Next, the big benefactor here as they head into turn one, already up into the third position. So Andre Heimgardner got a nice handy lead. He basically just has to stay out of trouble and finish this race to avoid missing out on taking that title and heading back to Aussie as the champ. Yes, and it's going to be interesting how this plays out, Clint, is the tyre strategy. Who's kept the green tyres for this final hit out? Well, I think it's the Hamilton Ashbelt boys. Just look at Brad Lathrop. He's got sandy tyres there. Yeah, no, Brad, unfortunately, he's run a little bit wide on cold tyres. We see here some of the invitation cars now, so Brad's got a lot of work to get back through up into the back of the Class 1 competitors. But he's having a better weekend too in that Dale ITM car. Yeah, he certainly has. He's taken a little while to get used to the uh, transition from Class 2 to Class 1, but it's great to see him out here fighting in amongst this large field at the final. Drama for one of the Class 3 guys. He's stuck coming out of the dipper. Now, these guys have got green tyres. The Hamilton Ashfield team of Lance Hughes and also Jack Smith, so watch out for them in this race. Yeah, here we see Heimgardner as well. He's drifted a long way back behind, but uh, safety car, that's going to bunch the field back up again. So Rob Wallace just parked coming out of the sweeper onto the main straight. The supporting end for the season for the very likeable racer out of Tauranga. So here they are, single file, Brock Timberley, McDonald, Herbert, Pajetsky. All leading them away from the restart. Back racing, back green again. Yes, as we see the field head into turn one, we can see the class one cars trying to tiptoe their way through, so it's going to get very busy over the next couple of laps. 
Let's hope we don't have anyone tripping over each other again as we've seen earlier on the weekend. Well, Herbert and McDonald have both had drama this weekend. There's been contact between them in race one and Herbert contact in race two. But, oh, she needs to get in front of McDonald to take the title. And here she is. She's dropping backwards. Yeah, Projetsky there passed into turn two as we jump on board with Nick Ross now. Making a big lunge here. Oh, that was pretty close to Chelsea. So, uh... They're trying to get through in their own battles for championship positions. Chelsea's now back ahead of Brzezinski, so she's back up into third in the Class 2 battle. So normally the racing lines, when you've got the Class 1 guys fast coming through the traffic, the Class 2 guys are what told, just hold the racing line, don't make any sudden changes, let them drive around you. Yeah, that's it, Clint. You know, they're all uh, fighting for racing room, as we see here, a bit of smoke back in the back of the field from Scott Taylor. but. Uh, the best thing to do is to stick to your racing line, and that's what Lance Hughes is doing there with Barguana, battling it out for position in the final turn. John O'Lester screaming up at Hampton Downs, just down the road from where he now lives at Caracas after doing lots of racing in the GT Series around Asia. Great shots on board, Nick Ross. Yeah, here we see Nick trying to get down the inside of Timperley into turn two. So he's been able to affect that pass. Now Lance Hughes down the inside of Chelsea Herbert. Barguana's now behind Chelsea. Let's hope that uh, they can get through here cleanly. i tell you what, it's a mobile traffic jam. You've got three classes, two classes going for the title. There's the invitation title for class three, and all the fast cars are having to drive through the slower cars. So it's, it's full on. It's intense, isn't it? Yeah, look, it's great action, and it's great to see the uh, class numbers swelling here at the final meeting. May it continue next year as we jump on board with Liam. See Blair McDonald there, or is that Lance Hughes? Too many of these uh, Class 1 cars on field, it's hard to tell. Bit of a missed gear there. Big speed difference between the uh, the cars, of course, but big difference in horsepower, gearing, the whole tyre package as well, so it's all designed for different types of budgets, different types of ability, different driving skills, different levels, but still creating pathways to come out of various classes like the Mazdas, and get into the B and TB8 so like Brock Tipperley has done and shown great skill over the championship. Yeah, and it's great a uh, class two competitor like Brad Lathrop stepping up into class one, so there is a uh, transition that you can go through. And oh, unfortunately, here we see another safety car, John, John O'Lester. Lester. Yeah, shame. Parked up exactly where Rob Wallace is. So that's going to bunch the field back up again. So uh, certainly a pressure cooker situation here for these championship contenders. Great to have Jono and the guys back racing in the BNTB8s. Making a real battle for the chase for the championship. It has resumes and Jack Smith, he's been so close to getting a win. Can he finally do it in the last race of the season? Well, let's not put the mockers on him, but he's uh, out in front and he's got good tyres underneath that Holden. So uh, let's see if he can hold position as we see the two teammates here fighting it out, the two Camrys. Herbert That's having too. a look. Oh. oh, she's lost it. That could be the championship for Chelsea Herbert. Oh, I'd hate to think that the pressure's got to her, but she pinched the rear brakes there and locked up and went round. What a Hopefully weak Hopefully she end. can refire it. There's a localised yellow there, but she's away again. And that could really cost her in the chase for the championship. She won't be able to beat Liam McDonald now. He's just got to be smart. But it means that it's good news for Brock Tipperley. He might be able to move up to second place. So... Wow, disappointment for Herbert, but she's had some great moments as well, though, with those breakthrough victories. Put in a strong performance, but here we go. The Class 1 competitors, we see uh, Andre Hypegardner there still shadowing Barguana as Jack Smith has a comfortable lead out front. Lance Hughes as well, currently in third, so they've saved some greenies. They've banked the greenies for the last round. Of course, the Hamilton Asphalt boys, they do all the track selling here at... Uh, Hampton down, so Lance Hughes knows the circuit in the North Waikato really well. Always doing a great job just keeping it up to scratch over the weekend as well. Along with the scratch race between the teammates from Tony Richards' Toyota. And what a great team effort they're doing too. On target for a 1-2 in Class 1 of the B and TV 8s The boys from Valley Toyota, Tony Richards' team out of Thames. Bargs, of course, second in the championship. Heingardner uh, on target to be crowned the B&T V8 champion for season 2017-2018.
We see here at the front that uh, Jack Smith has a bit of a bodywork flapping. Hopefully that's not going to uh, materialise into anything the officials are going to be interested in. Left rope and Tubbs having a really good battle themselves further back down in Class 1, so they'll be enjoying their own race within the race. Timperley. Here, here we have Timperley, yep. It's just uh, leading into the final turn. Liam's drifted a little bit behind him at the moment, and uh, it's great to see that Brzezinski there is right on the tail of him, so uh, he's putting in a strong performance here in the last race. Yeah, the blue 777 car, the 18-year-old coming out of Inglewood and the Taranaki. On board Matt Tubbs. Who's that? Hit? Not problems. Large shoes. One of the rookie races out of Hamilton. Here we go. Brad Lathrop around the outside. These guys are having a real fight for position down the field. Shows you there's a lot of over overtaking opportunities here at Hampton Downs. Rubbing his racing, swapping paint with the man who's going to pilot himself to a breakthrough victory. Jack Smith, the 18-year-old, out of the Gold Coast. He's the Australian Touring Car Champion, which is like their third tier. And here he's been getting some great seat time. He's been on target to try and get a breakthrough victory. And finally, he does it in the last race of the season. Ross coming home second, Bargs will be third, and Andre Heimgarder will be the champion for 2018. And Liam McDonald is going to defend his title, and under dramatic circumstances, Tipley gets the win. McDonald will take the title for the second year in a row. So confirming the final result from race three of the B&T V8, Smith gets his first win. Ross and Bargs wrap up the top three. Hyde Gardner wraps up the championship. Tipoli, McDonald and Brzezinski wrap up the top three in class two. Liam McDonald wraps up the championship to make it two from two in class two. So congratulations to 22-year-old Andre Heimgardner, number one in class one. Really stoked to see what we came here to do and to be able to do it um, with the uh, you know Tony Rich's team and all my sponsors, Superlux and those guys. It's uh, really good. Yeah, it's been good. I learned a lot doing Career Cup last year and um, came second in that. Just missed out by a few points, so wasn't going to make the same mistakes in this championship. And yeah, lucky bring home. And a one-two for the team and back-to-back -back titles for the 20-year-old from Southland, Liam McDonald in Class Two. Yes, yeah, sure, a lot of pressure this round. Um, didn't really know what to expect coming into the last round, but we just gave it our best and gave it our all and managed to come out on top, which I'm absolutely stoked with. So congratulations to Liam. He didn't get the burnout, but he did get the win, Jack Smith. We've definitely had some highs and some lows, but, um, you know, I, I like to think it was coming. You know, everyone's worked pretty hard and um, we've had, you know, reasonable pace all year. So it feels really good to top it off with a win. You know, I was really hoping to get one at least this year. You know, I loved it at the start. You know, it was a bit rough. <laughs> it wasn't the best first round, but ever since then, you know, it's been reasonably smooth sailing and um, I've enjoyed it. You know, I've had more fun over here than I've probably ever had racing. So, yeah, I loved it. So confirming the final championship points for season 2017-18, the win goes to Andre Heimgardner from Bargs and Ross in Class 1. Class 2, McDonald very, very tight with Brock Tibley getting up for second ahead of Chelsea Herbert. So congratulations to our two champions and we'll leave you with our last word from the classic Aussie battler. Jason Bugwan here at Hampton Downs. Well, it's been an epic season. It's gone right down to the wire. It's been a challenge right through it. We've had race wins, we've had DNFs, there's crashes, batches and plenty of great racing. But in the end, it came down to the last race and uh, it was great to see the Richards team got up. We've had different winners all season, but I got second. Aussie versus Kiwi, oh, well, what do you do? We come back and fight again next year. That's the last word.